Hey everybody, it's Brandon Hartness here, real estate agent in the foothills of Western North Carolina. And today I'm going to be doing a video on how to sell your rental property. This will actually be one of a few videos that we'll do on selling rental property. In this video, we're going to talk about smaller portfolios. So this would be kind of one to four unit rental properties, single family homes, duplexes, triplexes, quadplexes, and manufactured homes such as single wides, double wides, things like that. So I'm kind of going to go over some of the difference between those and then how best to get those sold for the best terms. But before we get started, I'd love it if you'd subscribe below. That way you don't miss another video from me. And always feel free to reach out to me with any questions that you may have. All right. So first off, talk about some of the different kinds of rental property. One to four unit rental property. We kind of focus on that because those types of properties often qualify for residential loans, which kind of changes the marketing strategy a little bit because you're marketing to a different pool of buyers. So instead of just investors, commercial buyers, people like that, you can market to smaller investors, maybe in those looking to live in the property themselves and use a conventional or some other type of mortgage, such as a FHA backed loan to buy the property. And so one of the big reasons we focus on this kind of separate than other rental properties is because a lot of times you don't have to have that commercial loan option to do this. They're not looking at cap rates and some of these other things that we're looking at with bigger commercial rental properties. So with single family homes, we really are kind of marketing to two big buying pools. The first would be investors, obviously, just like if we were selling a commercial um, rental property. But the second would be those looking to buy a home. So this could be first time home buyers, those looking for their family. These are just your consumers who are typically looking to buy a single family home. So it's very important to keep that in mind when you're selling your single family rental property to kind of think about what those two groups of buyers are looking for. And that way you're able to market directly to them to get the property in front of them so that you're able to get the best offer. And the thing we see with single family homes that have been rental properties is they often fall in that price range where it makes sense for them to carry themselves as a rental property. So that means that the rent that you're able to bring in for the property can pay for the mortgage, the taxes, the insurance, the maintenance, and still have cash flow and profit potential. So this means that while the home may be very appealing to first-time home buyers and those looking for an affordable way to get a home, it's also very appealing to investors and those looking to either rent out the home or flip the home and sell it for a profit. So that's one of the big things I would say with single-family homes is kind of know who your buyers are. You know, you have investor buyers and you have different categories within that pool of buyers. And then you have consumers and buyers, first time home buyers, people looking for their families. So it's very important to be able to market to both those groups and the smaller groups within them so that you get the very unique features of your property in front of those who are most likely to buy it, whether that be a first time home buyer, someone looking for their family, or an investor or a commercial person looking to, for a flip or to do a rental property or something like that. So that's something we always talk to our clients about is all of your potential buyer pools and how to market directly to them. And of course, that increases the chance that we get a great offer, which is the end goal. Another thing I'd say about single family homes when it comes to showings, you know, a lot of people come to us with questions about how to deal with a tenant in the property, how to sell a rental property. And so I'll go over some of that in just a minute when it comes to single family homes, because unlike some of the other things that we'll talk about, you don't have multiple options to show. You know, there's kind of like only one unit there to show. So if you're not able to show it, if you have a hostile tenant, those kind of things, you know, it can, can really put a damper on the ability to sell the property. So the first thing I'd say is it's always desirable to have the property vacant. That's the most desirable scenario. You know, that means someone's able to come in to the property, whether they're looking to move into it, such as a buyer, whether they're an investor looking to flip it or fix it up and rent it out, whatever it may be. It just means that they're not going to have to get rid of a tenant and they can immediately start work as soon as they buy the property. Okay. So if that's not an option, it's still okay. We've sold many single family homes that are rented. One thing I would say is kind of be mindful of where your tenant's lease term is. You know, if you have a monthly lease, that's very flexible. Okay, and that means if someone buys the property, they have to give the tenant a short-term notice to get out. Um, if there's a long-term lease in place, you know, say it's July and your lease goes through June, the person who buys that property most likely is going to have to honor that lease that's in place. Now, there are ways around that if they are using the property as their primary residence and there's some other scenarios, but a lot of times it just does make it a little more complicated if someone is in the property. It doesn't mean it can't be done. It's just kind of be thinking about if a tenant's lease is coming up for expiration or if you just had someone move out or there's something going on like that, that really may be the time, you know, to kind of think about getting it on the market. You know, just communicate with your tenant. You can let your tenant know what's going on. They may be cooperative with showings. You know, you can also, it's not always a bad thing to have a tenant in place. A lot of times we've had clients who have had very long-term tenants in place. 
who may not have the highest rent rates, but they really take care of the property. Okay, they pay the rent on time and they're really great tenants. And sometimes that can actually be a selling point. So it's not always a bad thing to have a single family home that you're selling that's occupied by a tenant. Again, there's a lot of factors that go into that. Any questions, please feel free to reach out. So that's what I would say kind of about single family homes when it comes to the other types of smaller rentals that we're going to talk about. You really have a lot of buyers there. And so kind of have these two big buyer pools that I would really pay attention to when it comes to marketing your property. And if you do it right, you know, if you get it in front of everyone that may be interested, kind of show the potential to them, whoever they may be, buyers, investors, whoever, you really do have the best chance at getting the best price for your home. And of course, that's something we talk about with our clients prior to listing. So if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Okay, so the second thing we're going to talk about is duplexes and quadplexes, triplexes. So these are the more multifamily properties that we think about. These have multiple doors, um, tenants in them. And a lot of times people are going to be looking at more of the income when it comes to these properties. Now, a lot of times when they're appraised, you know, they're still looking at either the sales approach or the cost to build approach, which is the two big ways we look at residential property value, uh, how much it costs to build versus, you know, how much it would sell for on the market. A lot of times those are the valuations when it comes to these two to four unit properties, but we do get much more into people looking at expenses, income, those kind of things. So, that's one thing I would say with these types of properties, it's very important to have your expense paperwork in order. You know, a lot of people are going to be looking for those kind of maintenance things, even if it's just a rough idea, just something written down can really, really help a lot of buyers visualize the numbers because a lot of times they're coming in, you know, they have no idea what the expenses are for the property. They're not quite sure what they're going to be able to get rent out of the property. And so it really helps just to have some kind of expense report so they have an idea of what they're getting into and they can make their numbers work. And so another thing I'd say with the duplexes, quadplexes, when it comes to showings. So what I've seen a lot, especially since the COVID era, is instead of trying to get someone inside of every single unit, maybe something if you have a unit that's empty, if you have a tenant that moved out, or if you have a tenant who's cooperative with showings, you can actually just have one unit maybe available for showings. Okay, and you can have that unit available, let someone look. If they want to write an offer and there's an acceptable offer, they can look inside the other units before they pay the deposit, the due diligence fees. Okay, that's just something I've seen in my experience when it comes to being able to get inside all these units and dealing with offers. So that's just something I'll be thinking about if I have these multi-unit properties, two, four units, whatever it may be, duplexes, quadplexes, triplexes, and you're kind of thinking about showings and how to coordinate those things. You don't necessarily have to have everyone going inside every single unit. So another thing I'd say with these multifamily units, um, something we've worked a lot with our clients on is maximizing the potential sale of the property based on the potential for rent. And so just to give you an example of that, something common that we see around here is, you know, say you have a duplex, we'll make it simple, two units, right? Okay, they're renting for, say, $500 each. So bringing in $1,000 uh, for the building. A lot of investors are going to look at that, you know, with the 1% rule. We'll do some other videos talking about the 1% rule, but that's just kind of a starting point when it comes to investment property. So let's just use that to make things simple. The 1% rule, we're going to look and say, well, if we're bringing in $1,000 a month, we'll pay $100,000 for the property. Well, the thing with that is, is that the rent rate potential might be a lot more with those units. Okay, there may be some cosmetic updates and things that have to be done, but let's say the rent potential there is actually $1,000 per unit. Okay, so you actually have the potential to bring in $2,000 for the building, which gives you a potential value of $200,000. Okay, so what we can do is we can market that to investors or buyers. And another thing that's even better is if we can go in and remodel one unit or get one unit rented at or close to market rent. Okay, this is something we've done a lot for our clients, help them get one unit ready show investors what the potential rent is. You know, it's one thing to talk about what something could rent for. It's another thing to have a signed lease in place showing what the rent potential is. Okay, say we're able to do that, right? Get one of those units that we we're talking about with that duplex rented out for $1,000 instead of $500, okay? Now, of course, if somebody comes in and buys it, they're not immediately going to be able to rent out the other unit for $1,000. So they may not pay the 200000 but we may be able to get 150 175 something like that, just showing them the potential. You know, we could go in and spend, say, ten, fifteen thousand dollars on a cosmetic update to a unit, rent it out close to the market rent, and show someone the potential, and potentially get forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars more for the property. And that's just an example based on nothing, just something that I just made up. But that's the things that we are looking at when it comes to selling, you know, these multi-unit properties. Because the thing is, with rents right now, you know, they're so high. It's just such a unique time that people are looking at that rent potential, okay? And even more than telling them, if we can show them the potential of the property, that really goes a long way. Uh, one last thing I say about those is that like a duplex, triplex, quadplex, where all four units are in the same building, you know, those do qualify for FHA loans often. 
And so it's like we were talking about with the single family homes. It's not just investors that you're marketing to, right? If we're able to market this property, not only to investors, but to those looking for house hacking, for a, a ability to move into an apartment and use an FHA loan or a low down payment loan in order to secure this investment property, instead of having to put, say, 15, 20% down, you can put three to 5% down. Okay, get into the investment property. You can stop paying rent where you're at. Instead of having a mortgage payment, the person on the other side is paying your mortgage payment. So you're building equity every month. Plus, you don't have a payment. You should be paying rent to yourself, be able to save up money. Right? So this is a big, big thing right now. You know, people are trying to find a way into investment properties without a lot of money down. We've helped, we have a lot of rentals. We've helped our tenants do this a lot. So there's a big market for those kind of things if you know how to market it to buyers like that. And so that's one thing that I would think about when it comes to these two to four unit properties is not only are you selling to investors, but you're selling to those buyers who may be looking for some type of investment vehicle that they can, that they can actually get into. And so if we're able to market to them specifically and to everyone else, you know, that may be looking, of course, we have a better chance of getting the best price for the property. Okay, and the last category I'll talk about with the small rental portfolio is manufactured homes. Of course, this could be similar to single family homes or the two to four unit properties. You know, it could be a single wide or a double wide that you have that you've rented out on a parcel by itself, or it could be a parcel with many single wides or double wides, you know, um, or some kind of multifamily manufactured home. You know, there's just a couple unique things about manufactured homes that I'd point out. One thing is they typically don't hold equity as well. You know, they're harder to borrow against. They're harder to get loans for in the first place. So those are some of the reasons that we see lower sales prices with those. That's something to be aware of. Other thing I'd say to manufactured homes is, you know, from an investment potential, the upkeep cost is typically more. And so that's a factor to consider, you know, just because you have something renting for one amount or a manufactured home renting for one amount compared to a single family home that's renting for one amount doesn't mean that they're necessarily going to sell for the same thing. But again, the thing I would say is the ability to showcase the potential of the property. You know, that's the big thing when it comes to manufactured homes. All right. So that's just some of my thoughts on the differences when it comes to these smaller rental portfolios. So now I'll talk about just some of the things in general that I think is important when it comes to selling your rental property. The big thing I see is kind of make sure that your ducks in a row before you get started. A lot of times we see that these properties are inherited or they may have been in family for a long time. They're in LLC names, things like that. So it's just always a good idea to make sure who has to sign what, you know, who's going to be responsible for everything. The other thing I would say is capital gains taxes and other financial considerations. So I would definitely want to check with my accountant, you know, just make sure what the tax implications are for selling properties. A lot of times these properties have little or nothing owed on them. So, you know, it's going to be a pretty big chunk of change when they do sell. And so it's kind of a good idea to go ahead and get ahead of those things kind of before you do get to the closing table. Another thing I'd say, like we were talking about a little bit before, but just have any expense reports, any kind of documentation like that is very helpful. You know, some kind of documentation just showing what the income is for the rental property and any expenses associated with it, any fixed expenses, any maintenance, repairs, anything that has to be done um, or anything that did have to be done. Another thing I pay attention to are those big ticket items, you know, the roof, the heat pump, septic tank, well, any of those things that could be really big expenses for buyers or investors when they're looking at buying the property. You know, that really goes a long way towards shoring up any concerns, helping them get their numbers done and increasing the chance that you actually do get an offer from them. So the big thing, of course, that people are concerned about is determining value. And of course, I would recommend a real estate agent to help you with that. But when it comes to single family homes, that's going to be a little different, obviously, because like I said, we're marketing toward buyers and investors. When it comes to the two to four unit properties, the income versus expenses is going to become much more important. People are going to be looking at those things like kind of the 1% rule, 50% rule, these kind of things that are metrics that kind of tell them how the property may perform over time. Same thing with manufactured homes, you know, whether it be two, three, four, single wides, double wides on a parcel, whether it's just one or two. Now, in general, a lot of times the value is going to be determined on a mixture of these factors, whether it's cost of construction, sales comparisons, or the income potential. And of course, like we talked about with the two to four unit properties, the income potential, you know, you can work with that some. So what I'd recommend is just kind of look around, see what has sold in the category that you're looking at, whether it's single family homes, duplexes, or manufactured homes. Kind of look at the rent potential for what your property is. You can do that online as well. Kind of go around and see what things are renting for. Similar square footage, number of bedrooms, type of home, those kind of things. And usually doing that, you can drive some kind of idea of what your property 
can bring based upon its rental potential. Or like I said, if single family home, there are some other considerations with cost of construction and sales comparison approach. But in general, you can derive a decently good idea kind of what the property may be worth on the market. If you do have questions about specific values, pricing strategies, those kind of things, please feel free to reach out to us. We'd love to help. One thing I'd say is just in general, kind of analyze your tenant situation, you know, whether it's a single family home or a four unit property, whatever it may be, you know, just kind of look at where things are with your tenant. You know, are they current on the rent? Are they taking care of the place? Is there someone that you maybe need to get rid of before you put the property on the market? And remember how we talked about it's great to have a vacant unit if it's possible. You know, these are all things to consider when it comes to marketing the property. Like I said, especially when it comes to those expense reports that we talked about, it's good to have tenants who are current with their rent and we're able to turn that in and show that for income. Otherwise, when someone's looked at the property, they're kind of looking like they're going to inherit a problem. And so those are just some things to think of when it comes to kind of looking at where things are with your tenants before getting ready to sell. So when it comes to repairs and maintenance, obviously we realize you know, not everybody's going to go through and completely flip their rental property before they sell it. But oftentimes it's good, just like when we're selling a residential home, if we can just go through and address some of those basic things like leaks under the sink, for example. You know, it's not a ton of money to fix it, but it really gives a different kind of perception when someone comes to view the property. You know, they see that these things are taken care of. Maybe they think there's not as much here that we're going to have to invest in. And so it's kind of the same when it comes to selling residential property. You know, someone goes in, they see the leak under the sink. They think, oh, what else is wrong here? What other money am I going to have to invest in here? And so with some not so expensive costs to do repairs, we can really alleviate a lot of those concerns right off the bat. All right. One final thing I'll mention, we talked a little bit about it at first, but Capital gains, taxes, those kind of things, I would really, really consult with someone that you trust for your financial advice um, when it comes to selling your rental property. You know, there are a lot of options these days, you know, 1031 exchanges are a big thing that we see. People can actually sell rental property, put their money into something else and defer taxes on it. Another thing we've seen, you know, people can actually move into the rental property, use it as their primary residence, and that does have some tax implications as well. Again, just a lot of considerations there. And again, just please feel free to reach out to me anytime. If I can help you in any way, answer any questions, I'd love to help any way I can with any of that stuff. So, and of course, my last piece of advice is to hire a real estate agent with experience in multifamily property. Of course, that's how I got my start in real estate, and I would love to help you any way I can. Please always feel free to reach out to me if I can answer any questions. If you'd like to learn more or just to talk, you can call, text, email me. Find me online, message me on social media, however is best for you is good for me. I'd love to hear from you, help you any way I can with your rental property here in North Carolina. And please don't forget to hit the subscribe button below. Thanks so much.